Hello friends, Martin here and welcome to this new video on my channel in which I want to show you an awesome new workflow for one of my favorite tools, which as you probably know is Substance Painter. So much has happened in the Substance world since I've released my CG Boost Substance Painter Launchpad course. Uh, in fact, so much that one day I realized that with all the combination of official and user-made tools, you can actually get a very powerful new workflow. So powerful that it almost allows you to sculpt as if you were in ZBrush, for example, but directly in Painter. Interested? Then have a look at this video. One note, this video is actually a free lesson from my Substance Painter course over at cgboost.com. So throughout it, I will be referring to a lot of lessons from this course. But now enough talk, let's get to it, because this will blow your mind. Now, what exactly do you need? Well, Substance Painter for one, Blender as well, there is actually a new version 2.83 available in the official release version. And also I'm using the paid version of the Carve product by Gens Buxelli. I'm not sure I pronounced the name correctly, uh, sorry Gens. Anyways, it's a special filter and brushes collection that allows you to do the whole thing, sculpt in Painter. If you don't want to buy it right off the bat, you can fortunately try the free version, so there should be nothing stopping you from trying all this out. Alright, so here I have this skull model I got from BlendSwap by a user called Ponyu. I'm actually using a low poly version that is part of the blend I've downloaded, and you can see it has no UVs when I go to the edit mode. Well, normally we would make some. But let's not make any this time and instead rely completely on the new feature that Substance offers, which is, drum roll, automatic UVs. That's right, the developers started focusing on this more and more and now it can reliably take care of quite elaborate models, even more than this skull here. So after I've exported the OBJ, I started a new project, 2K will do. Open GL and input the mesh here. Now, very important, every time you want Painter to create the UVs, you need to check this option here. In our case, on this small model, the default options will work just fine. Hit OK, it will work for a while and done. Let's have a quick look in the 2D viewport by hitting F1. And yeah, this looks pretty good. Let me actually test it with a material, for example, this leather armor, because why not? And this is pretty nice for an automatic solution at least. And you can of course always use the triplanar projection, which in specific cases gives you even better results. I in fact talk about these projections in the chapter four of the course. And that's really how easy it has become to UV models these days. Of course, this does not work perfectly every time, but I generally got really good results with this method. Next step, let's make this carve tool work in substance. Here I got this package and unzipped it on my disk. If you get the free version with only the standard brush, you will be able to of course follow the same steps that I show here. I first selected all these files and dragged them into the shelf. Leave everything as is, only the carve file set as filter. As usual, if you want this imported stuff to stay in your shelf forever and ever, you hit shelf option. Or, if just for this project, hit project. After the import, you can see we have all of these brushes here, most immediately recognizable by anyone who's ever sculpted. So a standard brush, smooth, rake, flatten, the usual clay buildup and clay, and finally, chisel and carve. Let's now just quickly add a thumbnail to this carve icon. You just right click it and find the image in the archive you've downloaded from Gumroad. Cool, now it's time to set up our sculpt layer. So first drag the carve filter into your layer stack. It will automatically create a new layer. With that done, create a paint layer and make sure you put it underneath the carve filter here, not above. And well, that's it apart of course from setting up some of our displacement options. So go to shader settings all the way down and in here increase the scale to something like 0.1. Make sure that the source channel is set to height and add more subdivisions. 
The more you add here, the slower the response you get when sculpting. So let's try out something like 24. That might be a good enough value for now. And with that, you can choose the brush you like and just do your thing. Now, because of the awesome displacement options and these wonderfully set brushes, you can really sculpt all sorts of 3D details on your painter model. And it's pretty awesome, I'd say. Wonderful thing about this is that this is still a good old substance painter. So if you know your way around painting here, it's all the same workflows. Let me activate the mirroring and try out some of these available tools. So I started with a standard brush, fleshing out some teeth here. At the seams of the UVs, it often happens that these artifacts appear. You can carefully avoid these areas or smooth them afterwards. That's however one drawback that I found with this workflow. However, you can see that this really is a true 3D displacement, which we will be able to even export later with the new painter options introduced in the latest versions. Here you can see me flattening the teeth with flatten brush. Then smoothing some areas with smooth brush. And also making some indentions with the carve brush. Again, as you can see, these are probably not surprising to any one of you who's ever tried sculpting. And already the first row of teeth is forming. Let's sharpen this one. Uh, one, two, three. Ah, yes, uh, this tooth to be the canine tooth. This is where some sort of reference, of course, comes in handy. I hope you're using one. I also used the standard brush to raise this area over here, but again, watch out for the UV seams. When I was kinda happy with this top row, I added the bottom row, this time using the clay builder brushes, which after all are much better suited to this sort of job, adding layers of rectangular sculpts on top of our base. This sort of brush is often used for the first rough sculpting phase, both in ZBrush and Blender. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn something more about sculpting in Blender, definitely don't miss Zach's course over at CG Boost. It's a bit older now, but definitely still very useful, even judging by the latest reviews. Alrighty, I used the clay buildup to add some detail above and below the teeth, and then used smooth brush to make the areas less jagged. I then proceeded with adding more details on the other part of the skull, trying out this rake brush, which doesn't really work so well as it does in other applications, but you can, I think, find uses for it even here. Me, I like to use this carve tool instead. With it, and the combination of smooth and clay buildup, I went around the model and added various details where I thought it was needed. Also, I was able to hide these UV seam artifacts by carving out more little indentions and cracks here. Obviously, I still suck at sculpting, but that's not really the point. The workflow is what matters here. Besides, we have Zach focusing on sculpting over at CG Boost. So yeah, don't look at me. I then repeat the process, adding more definition to the teeth, carving more recesses, detailing stuff out and flattening it where needed. Amazing thing is also the fact that you can use multiple paint layers like this, paint on each separately on top of the previous one and then hide them, delete them or even play with the blending modes and opacity just like you would when painting masks. And let's not forget that you can use normal brushes and alphas too right above all this. So basically, this car filter just allows you to sculpt in combination with all the other functions I've described in the previous lessons of the course. I mean, yeah, what's not to love? Okay now, when this sculpting was done, in fact, I did not even bake anything at first. Instead, I added this yellowish fill layer as a base and I only activated these channels, set the metalness to zero and plug the default bone texture to the roughness and normal sockets. And above it, I created a brown layer to add some dirt to it. 
Just as we tried out in the lesson 17 of chapter 8, I then utilized the power of anchor points. If you place an anchor point like this, above our painted height layer, it will gather all the data below it and keep the information for other tools inside of this project. For example, like the mask editor. What I want to do is to fill the sculpted detail with some dirt, especially where these little cracks and protrusions are. For that, we will add a black mask to this dirt layer, add a generator and find this mask editor. Lesson 9 of chapter 4 is all about this tool. Now to take the sculpted height into account, you first need to choose the micro height anchor point down here and set the source to be the height channel. Nothing happens, but that's just because we need to go up here and activate this micro height, so set it to true. Still, nothing happens. Well, now it's all about increasing the values over here. So play around with them and then raise this curvature opacity as well and go into the pull down menu and there hit invert. On top of that, I later baked some of my mesh maps and started painting this dirt even with some particles like rain and then on a special paint layer above it, even with some dirt brushes, which if you've gone through the course, you know these are my favorite for this sort of job. This helped a bit and I really dirtied it up, even adding some burn marks. Like maybe this human died by being blasted away by some sort of uh, robot. Finally, I also added a brighter fill layer above the base layer and masked it out using the dirt generator and mixing in a grunge map set to multiply. And that's how I created the bone material. Not only was I then able to take the mesh, export it with the new UVs and apply textures to it in Blender, but I was able to also export the displaced model with all the surface details being part of the mesh. Yes, it is very polygon heavy, but hey, you can always retopo or decimate later. And just the simple fact that I was able to go from this to this by just using height painting in substance just blows my mind. I immediately started using this workflow in my own projects, especially on Heroes of Bronze. You can see a helmet that I sculpted directly in substance with just the tools that I just showed you. I hope this technique enlightened you as much as it did me and I do hope Substance will pick up on this and maybe make these tools even better in the future. In any case, learn it, try it and make something awesome with it. Hope it was useful and see you soon. Martin out.